Hello and welcome to the video. In this video we're going to be looking at the differences between the Bixler 2, which has recently had a new version from Hobby King, and the Bix 3, which was the later version that's a little bit bigger and a little bit different. Now I have been a big fan of the Bixler for a very long time. In fact, my very first fixed wing experiences after moving into quads via helicopters was with a Bixler. So the Bixler was the gateway drug to all of the different planes and things that we've had on the channel over the past three or four years. And I've continually tried to look for a trainer plane that was as capable as a Bixler and could do all the stuff that the Bixler 2 could and have struggled. So I'm very pleased to see that the Bixler 2 has come back out again from Hobby King and at a very reasonable price this time around as well. So for all those pilots who come up to me in the field and go, ah, oh, thinking of getting into fixed wing, mate, what do you recommend as a first plane? The Bixler 2 is a very good choice. But another common question that I've been having is which one should I get? Is it the Bixler 2 or should I get the Bix 3? Because they're slightly different planes and the Bix 3 is a little bit bigger, it's a little bit heavier and has some other features as well. So what I thought I'd do is if you're looking at buying a fixed wing plane as a Sora or one that's very capable plane that can do everything from learning to fly to FPV to even a bit of slope soaring, then the Bixler 2 and Bix 3 are great options. But let me Focus a little bit on the differences between the two. So if you're not sure which one you want to go for, you've got an idea. Now, I think the easiest way for me to actually show you how these things are different is to show you the individual components and how they go together. So I've managed to get my hands on a Bixler 2. This is the new version. And the original one that I had uh, gave me many, many years of service. And despite a couple of tough landings, was pretty unscathed. And I only gave that one away summertime to a friend of mine who wants to get more into fixed wing. So let's look at the current versions of both of these and go through the differences. Now take the tops off the boxes, they're packed very similarly and the first thing you notice is the two wings at the top, the Bixler 3 is at the top and the Bixler 2 is at the bottom. You've got the big carbon spar that supports the wing for the Bixler 2 and then you have the wings on the top with the body and other pieces underneath. You'll notice that the new Bixler 2 has the big black stripes underneath, which the old one didn't. And the paint scheme is a more evocative of the Bix 3, the newer model, than the original Bixler. In fact, if I put these two wings side by side, you can see that they've kept the logo very similar and the other pieces too. Now, the things that you notice on this wing on the Bixler 2, first of all, there aren't any flap servos installed. You're going to have to pop them on yourself. The servos for the ailerons are already in there. But the other thing you might be spotting here, apart from these beautiful curved edges, I do like the way these wings look in flight, is the fact that there are actually hinges on all the control surfaces. So here's the horizontal stabilizer. And again, you can see these little plastic hinges in here, which are fabulous. They mean that everything is really free moving. My original Bixler 2 didn't have those. It uses a standard kind of foam hinge. The vertical stabilizer has all the graphics on as well. Again, even this little thing has the hinges in as well, which is a lovely touch. And then you have your bag of bits, which includes your prop, your adapters, a couple of leads, and screwdriver as well and then we've got the main event which is the body now the body from what i can see here is exactly the same as the original bixler if you've watched all those videos around on that the canopy is a little bit different rather being clear this time it's silver not a bigger fan of that to be honest uh, but when it's up in the air you're not really going to be able to see it the inside of the bixler 2 uh, continues to be a little bit cramped so you have to kind of post your battery uh, in through the slot at the front it has a protection underneath for landing on its belly, which is how you tend to land this thing. And here at the back, you've got the two control rods, one for the elevator and one for the rudder. And those goes into the servos up inside the body that control all that stuff. So putting it together is going to be an absolute piece of cake, just like the original Bixler is. In fact, I built both of these in about 20 minutes. That's how quick they are. Here are the different specs of the motors and the props, so you can see a comparison. You can see that the Bix 3 is a little bit bigger, it's about 50 millimeters wider. It's a little bit shorter than the Bixler 2. They've increased the KV of the motor and also increased the prop size as well to cope with that slightly heavier flying weight. So rather than being about 760 grams for the Bixler 2, it's about 890 grams for the Bixler 3. 
So the way the wings fit into the body is still exactly the same on the new model. So there's these two pieces with strengthening carbon plates that kind of lock together. You pop the cables from the servos down into the body into your receiver and then there's two long bolts that go up through the body through those wings and secure everything. Again, it can be a little bit tricky getting into your receiver in here because of the size of the opening on this older Pixlr 2. But I do love these things. These are such nice planes. And the thing about the Pixel 1, it was nice and quick. The Pixel 2 wasn't as quick, but has a lovely envelope. It will float and you can fly it at ridiculously low speeds, particularly when you install some servos into the flaps and put those flaps down. It will just stay in the air forever. Now, let's look at the Bixler 3. So the wings are a little bit different. There's an awful lot more reinforcement in here and the connection method is completely different. So the way the wings work here is they snap together and then go into the top of the model and they're held by some little thumb screws that go through this reinforced hole at the front. But hopefully you're seeing all of the additional carbon rods and things that are going out through the wing. Again, no servo installed for the flaps and you can see here if I marry up the wings we've got the slightly longer wing and you've also got a very different profile at the end rather than have that very rounded wing tip that you have on the Bixler the one on the Bixler 3 has a couple of angular cuts which still looks very nice particularly with the graphics both of these being reasonably high wing models and having these kind of upturned ends to the wings means that they are both very stable. Now the wings on this, uh, unfortunately there aren't any pre-installed hinges on the flaps on these wings on the th for the three, uh, but they have got them for the ailerons, which is good. This one comes with an FPV canopy and there's been a lot of talk at the early ones it wasn't very well put together but this one's pretty solid and that's a nice touch it means that adding FPV gear onto this model is going to be a piece of cake. The Bixler 3 also comes with landing gear that the Bixler 2 doesn't. Now you can get it as an option for the Bixler 2 and in fact I bought a couple of sets but used them once and then put them in the spares bin and have never touched them since and that's because these wheels are pretty small so unless you're landing on something like really really flat grass or you're landing on something like concrete or tarmac then they're neither use nor ornament. We have these little covers for the wheels that are quite cute and then we have our bag of bits with a prop and this time the reinforcing spar isn't a long piece of carbon the carbon's already in the wing you have this kind of aluminium rod that provides the rigidity when you put the two wings together and install it on top of the model the vertical stabilizer can carries the same theme again interestingly he isn't using those plastic hinges on the one i've got here it's more the foam hinge style that i had on the original bixler 2 that i had and then the horizontal stabilizer uh, is again following the same kind of format as the wing. Nice detail underneath to help with orientation, but no little plastic hinges. Just using the foam to provide the hinge line. So let's take the body out and show you the differences on here. Now we're seeing the two. First thing you'll notice is it appears to be missing a big chunk out the top. You have a reinforced piece that the wheels snap into, and then you have a recess if you want to glue the reinforcing piece over the bottom if you're going to skid land it. Now it appears like a detachable nose, but the one here is definitely glued in. And you can see you've got an awful lot more room in here to sight all of the different pieces. The motor angle has changed a little bit. It's moved up and backwards so that we can have a slightly larger prop if you need to. I guess that's there to support the additional prop and motor. And there's a couple of air holes in the back as well to promote airflow through the canopy because that's probably where your ESC is going to be in there too. The really nice thing is when you take the canopy off, it's how much additional space you have in front of the Bix 3 compared to the Bixler 2. There's tons and tons of room in here. We have this 20 amp ESC and there's loads of room for the battery. You're not going to have to try and post it through a letterbox to get your battery in. You can just drop it straight on the top, put a bit of Velcro over and you're going to be good. I do like that. That's a really nice improvement. And then you have the reinforcing pieces to hold the wing onto the top of the body as well. And that piece at the front is where those little black keys go into. 
decals seem to be pretty well fitted here and there's also nice reinforcement either side of the nose those carbon spars should help if you do come down and bump something nose first and to be honest that tends to be the majority of the damage that these kind of models get a friend of mine his Bixler ended up probably more hot glue than foam at the front end and it continued to fly really really well these models will take an awful lot of punishment so hopefully that additional reinforcement in the nose will help there's one other place where there's reinforcement and that is here at the back on the bix3 there is a rear steerable tail wheel so the rudder control is split in two one controls the tail wheel and the other one is going to control the rudder in the vertical stabilizer and what they've done is they've added additional strengthening piece right down the tail the tail appears to be the same width as the Bixler 2 but that's obviously there just to support that rear wheel and I guess that's part of the additional weight the FPV canopy fits really nice uh, it looks a little bit weird without the wings installed but I would probably pop an elastic band or a piece of velcro around it just to make sure in the event of a hard landing it isn't ejected along with your Mobius and your, your run cam camera or whatever it is into the grass. So hopefully showing you those two pieces gives you an idea of which one you're interested in. If it was me you were asking, I'd say, look, get yourself a Bixler 2 if it's a plane that you want to have just a general learn to fly with. They are fantastic to hand launch. They fly really, really well. They're very forgiving planes and they can do pretty much everything from FPV to line of sight to soaring to gliding. And there isn't much on it that you have to change. Adding the flaps is a worthy thing to do because with the flaps down, on a, particularly on approaches you can land at kind of walking speed. The Bixler 3 is a bit bigger and it's a bit heavier but it has an awful lot more room for bigger batteries if you want to fly longer and if you have access to somewhere that has a decent landing strip or a place that you can take off and use the wheels then it's definitely worth considering. I do like the fact that on the Bixler 3 the wings are removable. The thing with the Bixler 2 is you'll end up gluing the wings in place after they move around. After a couple of crashes you'll tend to find that if you hit the wing tip too hard in a nasty crash then everything inside will separate. You'll end up having to glue that stuff in anyway. That means that if you try to break it down for transport or try and replace the wing then you're having to cut foam which isn't great. I do like that Bixler 3 feature where you can undo with two little thumb screws and you can take the wings off. That makes it a lot easier to transport around. So in summary, both of them are actually really good choices. It depends on what you want to do. I fly my Bixler 2 on a 2200 3S and a 2200 3S will work fine in a Bixler 3 as well. However, with that slightly larger wing area and that bigger canopy, it does mean that you can put bigger batteries in there and fly for even longer if you want to fly FPV. These are probably not my first choice to put things like flight controllers in, like the Pixhawks and the APMs and the iNav stuff, just because of the limited space. But if you don't care about that, then the Bixler is still my favourite plane for a first timer or somebody looking for something that's just going to fly great out the box. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organised into easy to use playlists so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject we organise all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing, then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.